my next topic, I want to talk about the emergence of a double standard of policing that we are seeing emerge in the UK and in Canada in particular. There is a Christian pastor whose name is Arthur, Arthur in the Anglophile. This Christian pastor is from Poland. You can find his story on Rebel News. He's been arrested recently by a SWAT team because he had the audacity to practice his faith in Canada. There is a Christian preacher called David Lynn who has had his meeting places cancelled and is being prosecuted by the Canadian state for teaching the Christian faith in Canada. There was a pastor who comes here today, you may even see him, an elderly gentleman of 70 years old who was dragged off his ladders outside a tube station and arrested by the Metropolitan Police for preaching the gospel. The same police have allowed Muslims to preach Dawah across London. The same, mus the same police force have allowed you, the Adan, to be blasted into people's homes even though they don't want it. The same police forces allowed the Muslim community to worship shoulder to shoulder outside of the French embassy at the height of COVID. Does this sound like one police force for them and another police force for us? Christians, you've got to learn to speak up. There's no point just saying yes in your head. If you think I have a case, you have to learn to raise your voice. If you don't, say so. Let me ask again, does that sound like dual policing to you? Thank you. Yes, I was just going to get to that. The Polish Catholic Church in Balham was interrupted in the middle of their worship service by the police. That same police force have allowed Muslims to pray in London unhindered and unchallenged. Christians, we are being subjected to a double standard in policing. And why? Why? Because you take it. Because you are the doormats that they walk over. It's your fault that you are subject to double policing. It's your fault that the police treat you less and with less rights than other communities. You are to blame for the situation you find yourself in because you have been discipled by cowards. And many of you have become cowards. You have been discipled by wimps. And many of you have become wimps. The leaders of the church in England, the bishops and the pastors and the priests are more desirous of being seen as legitimate by an establishment that will never accept the Christian for who he is, or for securing their own paycheck at the end of the month, than they are in teaching you that you are a people with rights, and teaching you to stand up for those rights, and teaching you to stand up for your brothers and sisters when their rights are trampled upon. 
There is more leadership coming out of the Polish pastor in Canada called Arta. And more leadership coming out of the pastor called David Lynn than there is coming out of many of the bishops of the ancient churches. If you can't find leadership amongst your own pastor, then find it where you can. When we expect more from our leaders, our leaders will become better. Stop giving them the easy pass. Call them to a higher level of discipleship. A Christian leader who is not prepared to go to prison for the faith is not worthy of your support. Now, I want to be clear. I am not that leader. I am not the leader you might think that you're looking for. There's too much sin in my life. But, sinful though I am, I can still sound the klaxon of alarm and I can still point the leadership in the right direction. But it is to the pastors and the bishops and the priests, they are the ones that have to lead our great struggle. But they have to be caught up with the vision that there is a struggle to lead you in. And you need to challenge them as to why they don't. Now, any questions before I move on to my next topic? With this uh, police bias against Christians, what can we expect from the head of state who's meant to be the defender of the faith? So the question is, with the police bias that we're seeing, what can we expect from the head of state who is supposedly the defender of the faith? The answer is simple. Absolutely nothing except utter compliance to the Parliament. Because the Queen cannot do anything else and she herself is discipled by the same quiet kind of weak leaders that I'm calling out. This struggle that we Christians must enter into must come from us. We are the ones that need to establish the cells of solidarity. We are the ones that need to establish the networks of solidarity from Scotland to Cornwall, from Wales to East of England and Northern Ireland, and from this nation to France and Spain and across Europe and across the world. We have to do it at the ground level so that cells of solidarity uniting Christians from different denominations create a network in which manpower, resources, knowledge and information can be shared organically without any nexus or centre independent of our so-called leaders who are no leaders at all. Any other questions? So the brother asks, with these networks of solidarity, what is my ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to see the establishment of a muscular Christian faith that can stand up for itself and stand up for its own. And when that kind of faith re-emerges, you'll see the men come back to the church. When that kind of faith emerges, you'll see the West, dying at the hands of liberalism, come back to the church. And with that kind of faith, you'll see a new Christendom emerge in the West. I will answer that. How do we tie in the question of persecution that our Lord promised us with regards to the ideas of what I am saying? 
Jesus promised that if you are his disciple, you will be persecuted. So who are our leaders? It is those leaders of the church that are being persecuted. Not the bishops that are not. The bishops that are in it with the establishment, going along with the establishment agenda. They are not truly disciples of our Lord. Because if they were disciples of our Lord, they would be persecuted also. So you're not looking for persecution of free church, but you're looking for a more robust, self-defensive uh, church. Self Christians must accept that being persecuted is part of what it means to walk with Jesus politically, socially, economically, culturally. When we accept that, we will find our courage to walk as Christians again. When we embrace that truth, we will find that we will live our faith in the entirety of our lives and we will have true enemies because we truly stand for something. A world that is not threatened by the church does not need to persecute you. But a world that is not, a church that does not threaten the world is not being true to its calling. Because the calling of the church is to establish the reign of Christ. Okay, so you, you expect to find a, a stronger, more supportive church that loves each other, but is still going to be persecuted. In fact, it's likely to be persecuted in some ways more because it's making more a stronger statement into society as a result of stronger internal bonding and structures. Exactly. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, guys, any questions? So the Bible says that um, the Holy Spirit is our help, right? Yep. So how does that come into it? Because I'm assuming that if this, this direction that we're talking about, we don't need the Holy Spirit to help us. So we can need to be the Holy Spirit. So how do we go around? Because we've got to have confidence that the Spirit is amongst us. We've got to have confidence that the Spirit can guide His church. We must direct ourselves to do what is right, according to the apostolic teaching, and we must be confident that in that the Holy Spirit will guide us. So I don't believe that... Yeah, we've got to step out in faith as a community. Because the thing is, what I find is that Christians, you, you will grow in your discipleship by standing in solidarity with other Christians. Christ said that the world will know that the Father has sent me by how you love one another. It is in that practice of love for one another that the Holy Spirit works his discipleship amongst us. So we need to have confidence that the Holy Spirit can do what he, that Christ promises. It's about stepping out in faith. I, I appreciate you, you, you're talking about Christians yeah. in general. Are you yourself denominationally affiliated? No. No, okay. I don't believe in denominations. Uh, do you attend a, a church building? Or... I, I attend a fellowship, yeah. yeah okay. So, any other questions? And you're also you're preaching a message which I broadly agree with quite strongly, but how the, have you taken other measures to instigate such a church? Yes, yeah, so how do we get from where we are to where we need to be? It's a good question. And on this, I'm probably going to stop. So how do we get from where we are to where we need to be? Where we need to be is a people with a sense of our own identity and with a sense of our own solidarity. Where we are is a series of Sunday clubs that barely, if ever, have anything to do with one another. So how do we get from where we are to where we need to be? It starts at the local level. It starts with each of us getting to know the Christians in our local community. Getting to know the Christians who live down the street, live across the road, live next door, live the street over. When those Christians, we get to know them, we start to practice being a Christian community with one another. Living life together, one on one, family on family, group on group. It doesn't mean that you have to leave your Sunday fellowship to join their Sunday fellowship or even try to recruit them to join yours. 
on a Sunday, you go to yours, they go to theirs, you bless them, they bless you. It doesn't mean that you stop going to your Sunday Club Wednesday group or your Sunday Club Tuesday group. You can still do that. But you build community where you are, in your local setting. And within that building of a local Christian community, you start to support and influence one another. Oh, don't shop at that shop. This shop uh, supports discrimination against Christians because of the progressive agenda. Or go and shop here because it's owned by a Christian and you start to influence the local economy. You start to build a local politique, a block vote within your constituency. You form an understanding that you stand with one another. So you help Jack when he needs to move house. You help Linda with the kids. You help Paul when he's going out and evangelizing and he's having trouble because some local thugs. You build your local network of solidarity. And then that local network of solidarity is connected to another one through your, other, through your Sunday fellowship or through someone who knows someone in a different area and they're doing the same. And then if there's a bigger problem, we recruit more people in to deal with a bigger problem. Perhaps protesting, perhaps protesting outside the town hall. Perhaps challenging your local MP. You build a local politique and you do it by getting to know the Christians in your local area and standing in solidarity with those Christians. More relational, less institutional. More relational, less institutional, but not exclusive or against the idea of the institutions. Yes, I'll give it you right now. My email address. I ain't got. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, guys, I'm going to stop there. Going to get a cup of tea, and then I'm going to come back. But what I want to say to you is that you don't need your leaders to give you permission to do any of what I've said. Absolutely nothing of what I've said requires your leadership. You can just do it yourselves and encourage other people to do it. This relational way of being church eating together, as it says in the book of Acts, praying together, is only a complement to what you do with your Sunday Club Church. An example of this is the Christians in Acton who are connected to the Antioch community. They are a confederacy of churches. They all go to different Sunday Club churches, but the other six days of the week, they're living life together in Acton, supporting one another, backing one another up, helping one another, encouraging one another. You can't live by the values that we see in the Bible unless you do it with locally. So I'm not opposed to whatever Sunday club you go to. Keep going. I'm not saying try to poach one another. Don't do that. But love the Christians where you are. Build the church where you are. Okay. Institution, institutions, we're not trying, no, it's not about eliminating the institution. It's not about eliminating any institutional church. I'm not against our Sunday clubs, but let's recognize what our Sunday clubs are. Sunday clubs. The church is not a Sunday club. It's a people. Okay, guys, I'm going to go and get a drink. Thank you, sir. No worries. So you see your message is primarily for the church and Christians, I think. Yeah, it's for the, it's for the everyday believer. Yeah. I suppose this is a perfectly legitimate platform as much as for evangelism. Speakers go on. Yeah, totally.
No, I agree with an awful lot of what you're saying. I mean, amongst other things, church discipline and church disputes and disputes amongst Christians can't really be resolved when the body of Christ uh, things fragmented into yeah. a little Sunday clubs. I mean, I was sacked by a Christian on a very nebulous premise quite recently. It's been an extremely difficult time, but trying to get his church to actually get him to meet with me and talk it out. And, bring it and do what the church should be doing. Yeah, according to Matthew 18. Yeah. I just can't get anybody. We just because don't do that. Because Sunday clubs are not the same. Most Sunday clubs don't do discipleship. No, no. Sunday clubs are about keeping the Sunday club going. Not yeah, about building exactly. A community of believers. Exactly. And, so and, you could. But the you, early trajectory of the church was was on the up, and then it got intersected with worldly institutionalism, and it's been that way. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against institutions no, 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 in no, any no. way. We need institutions, but I think the institutional aspect of church should be a minimum, and the relational, apostolic. And, and Doctrinal and discipleship aspect of should be much higher. Be We're totally in yeah, agreement. Yeah, yeah, Peace be with you, bro. Yeah.